Okay, so I'm not a Hufflepuff, but I just wanted to say that I, I really do support you guys. And I mean this very deeply from the bottom of my heart. Because I literally wrote a 12-page research paper. Was it 12 pages? Hold on, let me check. Just kidding, it's 16 pages including all of the um, citations and everything. But what was I saying? Oh, I literally wrote a 16 page research paper about badgers and how they relate to the house and why that makes Hufflepuff the best house out of them all. And it was for my spring semester of freshman year. So I'm gonna talk a little bit about why badgers are the most amazing thing ever. In like all of the bestiary, bestiaries? Best, best, it's a bit the interesting thing was um, from the most like the oldest bestiaries and everything that were all like super super Christian You had the lion, the eagle, and the um, the basilisk and like just generally snakes Which is like all of the other three houses and they were all just these really um, giant figures in different kingdoms of animals so for example, like the lion was the king of the beasts, the eagle was the king of the birds, and then the basilisk the king of the snakes. Like th those were the three categories of live things. And you've gotten to know that like in the bestiaries, they had a lot of uh, things that were not real. Like there were griffins and phoenixes. So these things were all compiled into one like giant book of these are animals that exist even though they don't actually, as we know now. And in most of these things, there were just no badgers. Like, they didn't exist or something. It was like, the really interesting thing, though, was that the badger was always portrayed as basically Hufflepuff qualities of loyalty and protecting your family and being fierce about protecting the people that you care about, or the badgers that you care about. There was a story about maybe it was a mother or... A father badger he was facing this like huge enemy on top of the hill or something and he or she took the cubs and like put them inside their set and then like they they, they went and faced it was just like this very very typical kind of heroic story and that was one of the oldest things that I found usually we think of the European badgers like the ones with the stripes that go down the black stripes and then white and then like their body is sort of striped too. That's the image that appears on the Hufflepuff crest and everything. But then recently we, everyone's had this huge obsession with honey badgers. So I was like, okay, I'm gonna search this up too. And then the cool thing was that the honey badgers actually existed inside the bestiaries, but they weren't called that. Another thing you have to know about bestiaries is that there were a lot of animals where they just gave these like really crazy names and um, like mermaids for example they weren't called mermaids either were actually like whales and seals and things so a lot of things actually existed that they didn't know and they described them really really strangely so one of those things was the formica lion why did I pronounce it sort of awkwardly French and that basically meant ant lion which is like what are you talking about but the really cool thing is that the description of it actually really really fits within the idea of the honey badger and there hasn't been much research or very much proof about it but I found a lot of evidence that sort of pointed at yeah these two things are connected because the areas in which the antlion was found were also where actual honey badgers live today and presumably like years before. So I found that connection and then I was like, yeah, honey badgers, super great. They, they like bite off the balls of their enemies. That's powerful. The best thing that I found about badgers and both of these types of badgers was that they're mostly secular creatures. So then that means that all of these Christian ideas are sort of put against the secular, which I think sort of connects to why the other three houses are all like glorious and like, wow, these are so nice. Those sorts of ideas, I feel like they have almost been sort of passed down from this history of being, oh, the Christian imagery that is related to this sort of affects our brains and that's maybe why the other three houses don't get as much flack as Hufflepuff. But then there's so much evidence of just historically all these literary badgers being great. And then I connected all of these traits to the real Hufflepuffs in the books and was like, guys, 
These guys are super awesome. You guys have Tonks. Nymphadora Tonks is like the best person ever. She's so many people's favorite characters, right? Even the author of Fantastic Beasts, Newt Scamander, was a Hufflepuff. And we all know that he's gonna be a very amazing and awesome person because obviously he's the future main character of everything. So there are just all these amazing Hufflepuffs and I don't remember what I said before because the camera ran out. Hufflepuff values these qualities that are very difficult to achieve. They are the underdog amongst the four houses and yet all of the houses are in name completely equal. They are four equal houses and Hufflepuff is the one that has worked up from this position of the badger who is this creature that is not so traditionally royal and they are equal with all this royalty and it's just really awesome. And the fact that Hufflepuff requires work makes it so much more almost appealing than the other ones because the other houses, they, they value these things that are almost innate in a person, but Hufflepuff values the quality to be able to change and to be able to protect, which is something that is far more powerful than just simple cunning or the simple need to like have knowledge or bravery by itself. Because Hufflepuff requires almost qualities from all of these to be able to protect and be loyal. And loyalty is such an important but difficult thing to have. And somehow Hufflepuffs have that quality and that just makes them super amazing, right? And to be able to accept all these other people who the other houses rejected as well just makes the house so much more open and caring. And that presents like this message of, guys, we should all be like Hufflepuffs because that is how we are going to make the world into a better place. And that is super important. People seem to think that, oh, these are just the leftovers, but no, they are very important. And the fact that the people who are left over also are embraced by the Hufflepuffs who are chosen because of Hufflepuff qualities that they have makes it so that the other Hufflepuffs are almost able to like learn inside this environment of just warmth and caring and wonderfulness. So that's the end of my rant about Hufflepuff. Um, I hope you enjoyed it. and. That was really fun, so I think I might be going to make more um, Harry Potter rants soon, eventually, whenever I don't have anything else to talk about. And yeah, I hope you have a great day. Please like this video if you liked it, and subscribe if you want to. Bye! It was, for the longest time, the thickest book that I had ever read. And my dad started reading it to me first, but then after that, at some point we bought the fourth book and then when he was like one chapter in I had finished the entire book already